All right, engineering students. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let us dive right in and unveil the mysteries of three phase synchronous motor versus three phase induction motor. If you want to know how to design an induction or synchronous motor on the dissectable machine, we have already uploaded those on the YouTube channel. You can watch the playlist by the name Dissectable Machine. First up, the synchronous motor. Here is a step by step explanation of the construction and working mechanism of synchronous motor. Let us see the construction part first. As you see the stator, the stator of a synchronous motor is a critical component that plays a vital role in the motor's operation. As the stator core is made up of laminated silicon steel to reduce the eddy current losses, laminations are stacked together to form the core which has slots on its inner periphery. Now the stator winding. As three phase winding are placed in the slots of the stator core, the windings are spaced 120 electrical degrees apart to produce a rotating magnetic field when a three phase AC supply is applied. The windings are usually made of copper or aluminum conductors insulated with varnish or other insulating materials. Now you can see the frame. The stator core and windings are housed in a frame that provides structural support and protection. The frame is usually made of cast iron or welded steel. Now we have the rotor. The rotor of a synchronous motor is the rotating part of the motor that interacts with the stator's magnetic field to produce torque and enable synchronous operation. As we have two types of rotor, salient pole and non-salient pole. Salient pole is typically used below 500 RPM and non-salient pole cylindrical rotor is used for above 500 RPM. Now the field windings, copper or aluminum wire windings are in the slots in the non-salient pole rotors, which is connected to a DC excitation source to produce a constant magnetic field. Slip rings are electrical contacts that provide a continuous electrical connection between stationary and rotating part of the motor. They are typically mounted on the motor shaft. They are usually made of conductive material like copper or brass and are shaped as rings that encircle the rotor shaft. The purpose of slip rings in a synchronous motor is to supply DC current to the rotor winding, also known as field winding. This DC current generates a constant magnetic field in the rotor which is essential for the motor to operate synchronously with the stator's rotating magnetic field. Now you can see the brushes. Brushes are stationary conductive elements that maintain electrical contact with the rotating slip rings. They are typically made of carbon or graphite because these materials provide good conductivity and wear resistance. As the motor operates, brushes transfer the DC current from an external source to the slip rings, allowing continuous transfer of electrical current from the external DC source to the rotor winding, ensuring the motor operates synchronously with the stator's magnetic field. Now we are going to see the working mechanism. First, you can see the stator magnetic field generation. The stator consists of three phase winding placed 120 degree apart. As the three phase AC supply is fed to these windings, it produces a rotating magnetic field. The speed of this rotating magnetic field is called synchronous speed. Synchronous speed NS is 120 F by P. As you know, supply frequency here is 50 Hertz in India. And we are going to design four pole machine. So NS is 120 F by P, that is 120 into 50 divided by phi, which is 1500 RPM. So we are going to get 1500 RPM as we are going to see the practically. Now the rotor magnetic field. Rotor is energized by a DC supply, creating a constant magnetic field in the rotor winding. This is done through a slip rings and brushes. While in other motors, like in brushless synchronous motor, this is achieved by using permanent magnets or any other methods. Now you can see the synchronizing process. At startup, the rotor is initially at rest or rotating at a different speed than the stator's magnetic field. A static mechanism such as damper windings or an external motor is often used to bring the rotor speed close to the synchronous speed. As we have connected the external motor so that, so that the synchronization process takes place. Now you can see, once the rotor speed is close to the synchronous speed, the rotor's magnetic field locks into synchrony with the rotating magnetic field of the stator, you can see. At this point, the rotor and the stator's magnetic field rotate at the same speed. The motor is now synchronized and runs at a synchronous speed. Now you can see the steady state operation. In steady state operation, the rotor continues to turn at the same speed as the stator's rotating magnetic field. The motor maintains a constant speed regardless of the load, as long as the load torque is within the motor's capacity. 
Now we are going to see the key characteristics. First, the constant speed. The synchronous motor runs at a constant speed, determined by the supply frequency and the number of poles. As we have designed the four pole machine, so the number of poles is four, and the frequency in India is 50 hertz. So it is 120 into 50 divided by four. That is 1500 rpm. So the NS will be 1500. Then also the power factor. The motor can operate at leading, lagging, or unity power factor by adjusting the rotor excitation. So it is up to the demand. So we can operate this motor at leading, lagging, or unity power factor by adjusting the rotor excitation. Also the efficiency. Synchronous motors are highly efficient, especially in large industrial applications. So its application is in power generation, used in synchronous generators in power plants. Also in industrial drives employed in industries where constant speed is crucial, such as convoy systems, pumps and compressors. So in summary, the synchronous motor operates by synchronizing the rotor's magnetic field with the rotating magnetic field of the stator, allowing it to run at a constant speed determined by the AC supply frequency and the number of poles in the motor. Now we are going to see the induction motor. Unlike the synchronous motor, the induction motor operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Now we are going to see first the construction. First the stator, similar to the synchronous motor, it consists of a laminated core with slots for the three-phase winding which creates a rotating magnetic field when energized by an AC supply. Now you can see the rotor. It has two types of rotors, spiral cage and wound rotor. Scaral cage rotor made of laminated iron with bars of copper or aluminium placed parallel to the shaft and short circuited by end rings. Now we can see the working. Here is how it works. The stator when powered by a three phase supply produces a rotating magnetic field. The rotor usually a scaral cage type doesn't require any external excitation. In a state the rotating magnetic field induces a current in the rotor bars creating another magnetic field. This induced magnetic field interacts with the stator's rotating field, causing the rotor turn. But here is the kicker. The rotor always lags behind the rotating magnetic field, which means it never quite catches up. The difference in speed between the rotor and the magnetic field is called slip. It is this slip that generates the torque needed to keep the motor running. Induction motors are the workhouses of industries because of their rugged construction and ability to run directly off the electrical grid without any additional controls. So now we see the applications of induction motor, widely used in industrial applications such as pumps, fans and many other applications of machinery where variable speed operation is acceptable, commonly found in household appliances like washing machines, air conditioners, refrigerators. Now we are going to see the key features of both synchronous as well as the induction motor. As you know, the synchronous motor runs at a constant speed or you can say at the synchronous speed. But on the other side, you know the induction motor operates at a variable speed slightly less than the synchronous speed. You know the synchronous motor is not self-starting, it requires external starting. But on the other side, you know the induction motor is self-starting, it doesn't need any external starting. In the synchronous motor, the power factor can be leading, lagging or unity, but the power factor in the induction motor is generally lagging. The efficiency of the synchronous motor is typically higher, but the efficiency of section motor is, is lower. The construction of synchronous motor is more complex as you, you have seen yourself. But the construction of induction motor is very simple. Now we are going to see the common applications of both. As you know, both can be used in power generation, precise speed control, industrial machinery, household appliances. Now we are going to draw the comparison between the synchronous and the induction at the end. In short, choose a synchronous motor for constant speed and high efficiency needs. Go for an induction motor if you want simplicity and versatility. Thank you very much.